Cool. How you doing, Dawn? I'm great. So good to see you. It's always it's, so cheerful to see you. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's always good to see you. You, you know how much of a fan of your work I am. That goes without saying. I've been telling you that for the last three years or more. But this one, Diva, Deadlocks. Ooh, <laughs> you went all the way in, and it is all really the way in. <laughs> Listen, and it's right on time, especially with what we're we're dealing with in, in America right now. So what I want to know first and foremost is what was the one thing that shocked you in the process of you pulling this piece together? Because it's all encompassing and it the breadth and the depth of it is very intense. Um, well, first, thanks for having me and for being such a champion, not only for me, but for so many makers and makers of color and, um, you know, our voices, like our, our work gets out because people like you doing doing this. And so, you know, I seriously, sincerely appreciate. Um, we see you. We see you. We appreciate you. Um, you know, I am a lawyer and uh, this is my second career making films. Um some people say like, why do you make so many? I'm like, cause there's so much to say. <laughs> and there's, I got started late. Um, but with this, you know, I literally could have made a series just about race in the Supreme court. Um, there are so many intersections that are not always so visible, but what I wanted to do here is um, I think anyone, the Supreme court is so top of mind these days with so many decisions that affect all of us. And yet I don't know that people, are familiar with the history of how did we get here? Um, this didn't just happen overnight. This is decades in the making. And so I wanted to start with some good news. Like, you know, my grandmother used to say um, before the Supreme Court decision, because for her, there was only one. There was Brown v. Board. There was, you know, desegregating schools, which for her, the center of what she thought of for the Supreme Court. And that's the case for a lot of black people and for a lot of minorities and for women that we would look to once upon a time, we would look to the Supreme Court and say, just get it to the Supremes because they're going to protect the least powerful of us. And so I wanted to start with that to remind us, like, not so long ago, that's where we were. Um, and, you know, today, um, that's not the case. And so, um, you know, reminding us of what we could actually be um, is, is, I think, really, really important. So that's what I wanted to do with this piece. Cool. I, I appreciate that. My favorite um, chapter or episode, rather, was the fourth one because it is like all encompassing of the other three episodes, but yet hinting about where we are and where we might be going. After doing all this work, where do you think the Supreme Court is going at this point? I think, um, you know, like you can't choose among your children, but the fourth one is kind of my favorite too, because it's like, and one of our contributors said, like, this is what we've been waiting for, right? It's like, put it all together and to say like, okay, here we are. Um, and, you know, what What I think is, I, what I learned during this is that I'm even more of an optimist than I thought, because I don't. First of all, we can't just give up. There's no plan B. There's no other court to go to. <laughs> so we got to fix this one, right? Um, but I, I think the court is really aware of um, the hit to its reputation. Mm -hmm. And we're not just talking about the result of the decisions. There's always going to be decisions you don't like, you know, like we, you don't always win. You don't always get the gold star. Too bad, so sad. But what we're talking about is the way that the court is making decisions about the fact that there are no ethics rules about the court just randomly making up or ignoring facts. That is pretty unprecedented and that is open to criticism. Um, and so, you know, the public, we are the power of the court. It has no army. It has no budget. <laughs> it has no power of the purse. Um, and so if it loses its legitimacy, um, that's when you're talking about a real constitutional crisis, if people just don't obey. And so that is what we're literally trying to avoid. And so I hope that this series is part of that conversation to call out for people. You do have a choice because Supreme Court, 
uh, justices are appointed by presidents who are elected. They are confirmed by senators who are elected. And so if you want fair maps for your elections and you want decisions that reflect your beliefs and values, and you want a court that you can respect, you can make that one of your voting issues. You can make that, you know, you can make your voice heard. All right. You heard it here first, people. <laughs> Last but not least, Dawn, I want you to talk um, really quickly about the archival footage because there was tons of it. Is there anything that you really, really wanted to be in there, but you couldn't include it? Um, no, I think we got, we have over 200 minutes in the series of archival footage. Um, and we probably reviewed, um, I think it was something like 7,000 individual clips to compile the series. So there's a tremendous amount of work. Um, the archivists and producers who worked on this were just buried and swimming in this to bring you some of the most important. So you will hear things like Richard Nixon say, he doesn't oppose abortion in all cases. Maybe if there's a black and a white, he opposes abortion. You will hear Mitch McConnell say that he's going to not confirm any uh, nominees by liberal uh, politicians because he's mad about Justice Bork, not Judge Bork, not being nominated. You get to see all that for yourself. And that's part of what documentary can do is we can remind you, this is what these people said. <laughs> this is not me commenting on what I think they are or putting words in their mouth. We, we let them have their own say. Um, so I'm really proud of that. We worked really hard for three years on this series in order to bring all of that together. Well, it was powerful. It's a very, very powerful series. And like I said at the beginning of our time, it is right on time. I'm hoping that a lot of people see it. I know I will be talking about it and I'll be touting it because I think it's important. I, for one, was not aware of how the Supreme Court worked because that just wasn't my vibe. But now I kind of need to make it my vibe. And I also wasn't aware of how narrow the margins were that some of these people <laughs> got approved. I was like, out of all of them, the only one who overwhelmingly got approved was Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And that should speak volumes to the people that watch the series. But alas, I am out of time, as always, when talking with you. But thank you so much for giving me your time. Thank you for Deadlocked, How America Shaped the Supreme Court. And thank you for all of your projects. As usual, they're always going to be like water cooler topics and something that people should pay attention to, should pay attention to and should want to pay attention to. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you. So great to be here. <laughs> All right. Bye. Okay.